Hi everyone, my name is Sophie. Today I will share my story. Maybe you will judge me, but in the end I had to do it. Free myself, so to speak. I sold mine, precisely. In general, I will tell you from the beginning. My father was a pilot, and as you know, they are rarely at home. Permanent work, training in other countries, business trips. But despite this, I loved it very much and always looked forward to it. Every time he visited a new country, he brought a gift that we thought was a talisman. At times when I missed my dad very much, or when I had bad moments, I would open the box with talismans. They were very reassuring. It was like sitting by the river, watching the current and finding new strength. I had in my collection a rhinoceros from Africa, a silk handkerchief from Turkey, a wax figure from Prague, and many, many other most interesting and unusual things. But the most important of them was the Hyorphia stone. This non-ordinary talisman, it was as if there was an unusual amount of energy in it. He gave a lot of strength and self-confidence. I didn't get it easily. This stone is not for sale, and it could only be found in India on a high mountain in a temple. The Buddhists would only entrust this stone to a few, namely those who would bring the letter. In the letter, the future owner of the amulet had to state about himself, views on life, promise to change himself, and treat all living beings with pure intentions and soul. In general, there was a whole book dedicated to this stone and the letter. The Buddhist opened the letter, read aloud, and after which of these stones changed its color from black to blue, he gave it to them. Let me remind you that this happened very rarely. They came from all over the world, and only a few managed to buy this precious stone. Once my father finally took a vacation, and we all had to fly to the sea. I took advantage of the moment to persuade to take a vacation to India. To be honest, I spent half a year on the letter, hundreds of times reworked, thought about almost every letter. I prepared carefully for the meeting with the Buddhist, and the rest of my family was a great happiness for me. Therefore, the vacation was long awaited. Well, this moment came, and we went on a journey. The time passed very cheerfully. We spent so little time together, and I tried to enjoy every second of it. On the last day of our trip, my dad and I went to the same mountain. We specifically left it for the last day in case I didn't get the stone so as to not spoil our vacation. The climb was not easy. On the one hand, it was hard to climb so high, and on the other, I was very worried. Having overcome a thousand steps, my expectations were fulfilled. I got my long-awaited stone, Hyorphia. My intentions were sincere, and the amulet was to my liking. It was the perfect end to a vacation. It was very sad to leave India, but my father promised that we would fly here again in a year. But unfortunately, life has its own plans. After a month off, my father went back to work. On the first day, there was a terrible plane crash. The plane crashed, and my world collapsed with it. The bright, bright days turned to gray. My adolescence aggravated my condition, and that good-natured, cheerful girl died in me. Even after the anniversary of my dad's death, my depression didn't go away. It just kept getting worse. And then my mother decided to move to another city. The psychologist recommended getting rid of all things related to dad, but we couldn't make up our minds and just left the house and moved to another city with the necessary things. In my memory, the days passed quickly. A new city, a new society, replaced my boring, meaningless days. I began to open up to people again, to communicate. This fate and I cannot return and change everything. With such thoughts, I tried to awaken in myself the girl who existed when Dad was alive. It was very difficult to cope. Over time, we had a hard time with money because Dad provided for us. After five years, my mother and I were forced to sell the house that we once left in memory of my father, and all things with it. While flipping through the internet, I saw the stone Hyorphia. The author wanted to buy it, but I did not pay attention, thinking that someone was just joking and soon forgot about this ad. First of all, I had to sort out my box with talismans. I sat from morning to evening. My head was swimming with thoughts with different memories. 
I realized that I really missed these gifts. But no matter how much I thought about it, I just couldn't get rid of them and decided to keep everything for myself and find the strength to get back on my feet and go back to my old life. But that amulet brought from India stopped changing its color, probably because I became a person not with an open soul. I stopped being friendly. I was angry, remembering how much time and effort I'd spent on him. I stroked it again and again, but it also remained insensitively black. Out of anger, I decided to get rid of it. I typed the name of the amulet on the internet, and there were a thousand ads for its purchase. People were willing to give millions for this little amulet. Gradually, my anger turned to excitement, and I imagined how my mother and I could get rich in an instant. I didn't think to put the stone up for sale. From the first day, a dozen calls came, and with each call, the amount for the amulet increased. Greed took possession of me. I was waiting for a buyer who would offer more. More than what amount? I didn't know yet. After much thought, I put up for auction my own, or rather my father's and my amulet. The auction lasted all day, and at the end of it, two million dollars was offered for the stone. Without a drop of regret, the next day I handed it to the next owner. At that time, it was the right decision for me. It seemed that I helped my mother, and we got rich. But over time, the anger faded, and the mind came to itself. I felt very bad and ashamed. I forgot the most important thing, that the only owner of the amulet is only me, and the amulet is not worth any money because this is what's left of my dad. The amulet linked me to past vivid memories of my father. I realized that when I held it in my hand, I could feel my dad's presence next to me, and the energy in him gave me more strength and confidence. Parents' gifts are priceless and can never be returned. My mother reminded me of all this when I handed over the money for the amulet. She cried for a long time, didn't understand why I became so selfish. Along with it, did not understand me. I seemed to have sold my loyalty to my father along with the amulet. After all, every item in this treasured box is a part of my father, and the stone was his heart. It's a pity that I realize this only now. And apparently, nothing can be fixed. Hi, I'm Christian. Many people know me as Chris. I'm an active blogger. My passion is to reveal other people's mysteries and secrets. It's like being a detective, but I hire myself. Once I even managed to stop the stealing of money at school, all thanks to my instinct and observation. But I could not have imagined that I could have no less terrible things going on under my own nose. And especially since my own sister was involved in it. So as I said, I am a very active blogger. This is the kind of hobby I chose for myself when I was very young. I was always attracted to technology. These amazing lenses on camera lenses looked better than any jewelry. Anyway, on my sixth birthday, I asked my parents for a camera. They bought me the cheapest one. They weren't sure it wouldn't break in a week. But I began not only to shoot the first videos, but every time I tried to fix my instrument myself. Over time, all my videos acquired an interesting plot, in parallel, I learned to comment on them with voice over text. Then I discovered editing, and videos became full-fledged humorous. Sometimes, there was a little drama, and then I got involved in investigations. I remember the first time I found Aunt Manny's cat on my own. She was so sad that her pet had been gone for a week. Unexpectedly, I wanted to help her. But since I never parted with my camera, I took everything on video. My aunt's cat was an expensive thoroughbred, and I immediately assumed that it might have been stolen, and I remembered that on that day of its disappearance, I had seen a very suspicious ice cream van on our street. The van stayed on the street for several hours, but did not open and did not sell any sweets, and suddenly left. We had this van again and again. I wrote down the license plates, took a video of the car, and after almost an hour of standing still, I saw people in ice cream uniforms dragging a refrigerator into the car. And all would be nothing, only when I followed them on my moped. I saw that they were unloading stolen cats from there. Everything was caught on my camera. Then I came to the station. So they caught these novice thieves, and I brought Aunt Manny's cat home. After such excitement and adrenaline, I decided to combine two now-favorite cases into one, the investigation of a blogger. All the footage I edited and uploaded to the network. The views were very enviable. 
So, not so long ago, I bought a new camera. I'd been dreaming about it for months because it had a cool night vision function. Naturally, I decided to test it that night and installed it on my computer table in my room during the day. Suddenly, my own sister, Peggy, knocked on my door. I saw that she was holding a blanket and a pillow. Oh no, don't tell me mom and dad are fighting again, I said. Peg nodded. Damn it, come on in, I told her. When our parents quarrel, my mother throws my father to sleep in the hall, and there he does not like because the sofa is not comfortable. In my room, I categorically did not let him in because he liked to touch my cameras and confuse the settings. So he used to take my sister's room, and she would come and sleep with me. During these moments, I slept on the floor, politely lending my bed to Peggy. Anyway, we went to bed and forgot to turn off the camera. When I woke up the next morning, Peggy was gone, and I washed and dressed and remembered the camera. Damn, I forgot to turn it off. Well, let's look at the quality of the image, I said to myself and began to view the video on my computer. What a picture. The quality is excellent. I was happy and was about to turn it off, but I saw something strange. Peggy corresponded with someone on the phone for a long time, and then got out of bed and went to the window. She stood there for a while and then lay back down. What the hell? Maybe she was ill and decided to get some fresh air, I thought. Then the spirit of Sherlock awoke in me, and I decided to follow her tonight. Fortunately, my mom and dad still haven't spoken, which means my sister will be spending the night with me again. I also set up a camera before going to bed and pretended to be asleep. At about 3 o'clock, Peg got out of bed again and went to the window. I was looking in her direction, but I could not see what was happening on the floor. The bed was blocking everything. She stood there as if waiting for something, and then lay down again as if nothing had happened. In the morning, when she left, I quickly watched the video, but the picture was almost exactly the same. Incomprehensible. She got up, went to the window, and then lay down again. A couple of days later, our parents made up and Peggy went back to her room. I was very curious and tried to ask her very carefully if she was sleepwalking, because I could hear her walking around the room in my sleep but Peggy just laughed in my face and told me that my blog was making me crazy. So I decided to set up my camera in her room. There was a closet right next to the window, and I hid the camera upstairs among the toys while she wasn't looking. When I looked at the recording, I saw that at the same time my sister came to the window, only from this angle I could now see some person on the street. He was hooded and masked. They did not speak. She silently approached, he gave her something and left, and she went back to bed. I decided to examine her bedroom and waited until she went to the shower, and I went to the window, but there was nothing there. Then I searched the bed and found a pocket in the mattress. I rummaged there and found some strange bundles. There were ten of them. I opened one of them and was just blown away. Christian, she screamed. From fright, I dropped a package on the floor, and some white pills scattered on the floor. Peggy scrambled to collect them, slamming the door behind her. I stood there like a post, and did not understand what kind of medicines they were. My sister turned purple with either anger or shame. I didn't dare ask her what she was hiding from her family. But she started talking. Christian, don't tell Mom and Dad. I promise I'll be done with this soon. It's just a good income much more than parents give. Do you want me to share it with you? She was talking fast, and I couldn't believe that my sister was a drug dealer. I didn't even want to know anything about it, because if they caught her, they would question me, and I didn't want to tell them anything about her. But I couldn't pretend that nothing was happening either. I looked at her and said I had to tell mom and dad. She begged me not to do it. Do you understand that you will have huge problems later? You have no idea what you're getting yourself into. She nodded her head, but I didn't like it, I swear to you, she said, and began to cry. At that moment, mother came into the room, and Peggy jerked her hands back with the bundles. My mother noticed this and asked what she was hiding there, and why she was crying. This was a crucial moment. I was tossing around inside myself, not knowing what to do. I'm sorry, it's for your good, I said to my sister, and I told my mother. Peggy was sobbing at the top of her voice and shouting that she was sorry and wouldn't do it again. My mother was in shock. In general, it was a big fight in the family. 
Very big and serious. But that's another story. Click I liked it and subscribe to this channel. There are a lot of other cool stories here.